estimation. Now, because God is beyond time, is outside of time, it means that He knows everything concerning my life. So, does it mean that God predestined some people to go to heaven and some to go to hell? I don't know if you've ever asked yourself why, where, and for whom was hell created? I don't know if you've ever asked yourself, do I choose God or does God choose me? And those are among the questions that I hope we are going to get answers to in the course of today's session and we are going to wind up next Sunday. So I'd like to begin by defining what free will is. And free will is the power to make choices that God has given us. Each and every one of us here is not a robot. God has given you the ability to make decisions when you find yourself in a certain situation. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is what is called free will. But one thing that we need to know is that our choices have consequences. Praise the name of the Lord. In as much as God has given you that ability to make decisions, to make choices when you find yourself in certain situations, God still holds you accountable for the choices that you make. And that's what the Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 99, verse 8. We are not going to project that, but the Bible says that to Israel, you are a forgiving God, but you punish their misdeeds. To Israel, you are a forgiving God, but you punish their misdeeds. So that means that whenever Israel will sin against the Lord, God will still hold them accountable for the things that they did. Amen. And so we can continue as he fixes that. So God gave us free will for a number of reasons. And the first reason that why God gave us free will is to decide whom we will serve. God created us basically for worship. But God does not want to impose his will on us. And therefore God gave us a free will so that we may be able to decide whom we will serve. That's the first reason we are looking at. The reason as to why God gave us free will. And you can get that from the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15. Joshua tells the Israelites that this day you will decide whether to serve the gods that your ancestors served or the gods that the Amorites served. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So we were given free will to decide first whom we will serve. The second reason as to why we are given free will is to decide if we will obey or disobey God. If we will obey or disobey God. And you can get that from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, from verse 1 to 2, and also Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. That is referred to as the chapter of blessings and curses. We are also telling the Israelites that if you are careful, 
to obey everything that I command you this day. Then this blessing shall follow you. And he continues to list the blessings. And then in verse 15, he tells you, But if you do not obey everything that I command you and carefully observe everything that is written in the law, then these curses will follow you and the generations to come after you. So that gives us a second reason as to why we have a free will. We have a free will to choose whether to obey God or whether to disobey Him. Praise the name of the Lord. The third reason as to why we are given a free will is to decide between life and death. To decide between life and death. Now I'm not talking about this physical life that we are living or the death, the physical death that we every one of us is, you know, is the fate of every one of us according to the book of Hebrews. I'm speaking about life eternal and also eternal death. God has given us free will so that we may be able to choose between life and death. Amen. Thank you so much. So the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 that this day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. Praise the name of the Lord. The truth of the matter is that everyone of us who is seated here is an eternal being. And we are going to spend eternity either living or dying. My primary school teacher used to give me a very funny illustration of what hell was like. She used to tell me that in hell, you will wake up, you are sleeping on fire, you go and shower fire, you take fire for breakfast, take fire for lunch, you dress fire, everything is fire. Praise the name of the Lord. So the truth of the matter is that we are all eternal beings and we let us spend life eternally living or dying separated from God. Amen. Now let us look at predestination. What does it mean to be predestined? God is omnipresent, He is omniscient, and He is omnipotent. God is not limited by time. God knows the end from the beginning. God knows exactly what you are going to do the next second. No, no, you may find it. Okay, now the next second. Here you may find it. God knew in advance what you are exactly you are going to do. Praise the name of the Lord. And this attribute of God makes it very hard for people to understand. Then if God knows what I'm going to do, the decisions I'm going to make, He knows my end, even before my beginning, does it mean that God is the one who decides what will become of me? Does it mean that God is the one who decides those who will get saved and those who will perish? In fact, there is a term in the Bible called the elect. I had a discipleship group during my time here and the name of the group was God's elect. And I remember I used to ask them every time, do you know what it means to be God's elect? And that term is there in the Bible, the New Testament is repeated several times, close to 20 times. And therefore, it is important for us to understand when the Bible talks about predestination, God knowing what will happen before what does the Bible mean by that? Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I would like to mention very quickly that to predestine means to determine the future or the fate of something before. To predestine means to determine the future or fate of something before. That is the definition that Englishmen give us via the dictionary. However, Biblically, predestination does not imply that God determines our actions beforehand. I would like us to understand that. Predestination, biblically, 
does not imply that God determines our actions beforehand. And the key word there is actions. The reason as to why God does not determine our actions beforehand is that that will make us robots. If God were to determine what we will do, if God were to determine our actions, then that will make us to be gods, robots. But God did not create us to be robots. He did not. God gave us a free will. That's why we began from that point by defining what free will is. Amen. So, when the Bible talks about predestination, the Bible means that God determined beforehand that those who choose Jesus will belong to him. And we are going to look at a couple of verses that are going to give us that illustration. Amen. So God determined beforehand that those who choose Jesus will be conformed to his image and will belong to him. As you look at predestination, I would like to bring one point before I give us two verses. When God created Adam and Eve and placed them in the Garden of Eden, He also planted a tree there. Besides the tree of life, there was another tree, and it was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So what that means is that evil already existed at the moment that God began creation. Otherwise, why would God create a tree of knowledge of good and evil? Evil already existed. It is very important for us to know. In fact, the existence of evil could be the reason as to why in the beginning the world was formless and void and chaotic. Why would it be chaotic if it was not as a result of evil that already existed? We know this because Lucifer rebelled against God before God began the work of creation, creating one for man. Praise the name of the Lord. Therefore, that's why it was important for God to give man free will. Because everything about God is good. Everything about the devil and the angels who have rebelled against God is evil. And therefore, God wanted the man to make a choice between obeying God or rebelling against him by healing to Satan. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's the exact reason as to why God did not create us as robots. So the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 to 5, I would like us to look at those key words that are highlighted for us there. The Bible says that, for so he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. So from this verse, who chose us? It is God. Praise the name of the Lord. And he chose us when? Before the creation of the world. So it is interesting to know that before God began the work of creation, he chose you and me to belong to him in Christ Jesus. And he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Christ Jesus. As you look at that phrase, I'd like us to note that Jesus Christ was and is the only begotten Son of God. Adam was the created Son of God. You and I, we are the adopted sons of God. It is important for us to note that. And this is not something that caught God by surprise. That when Adam and Eve ate that fruit, God said, Wow, oh, moment is too often. She said, Let me scratch your head. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? No. It is something that God had planned before the creation of them. I hope you are seeing that from this verse. For so He chose us in Him before the creation of the world for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. It's because Adam said Adam and Eve's sin did not touch God by surprise. In as much as it was not God's desire for them to sin, he knew that they would sin. Praise the name of the Lord. 
But that does not mean that God will be happy to their sinful action. Praise the name of the Lord. So before me, God predestined us for adoption to sanction through Christ Jesus. And that was according to his pleasure and will. The Bible also says in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 29 to 30, that for those God for me, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he may be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Sisters, hallelujah. I know the Bible talks a lot about men, 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 but here at least it has been gender sensitive. Amen. Yeah, that he may be the first one among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Now, I'd like us to begin looking at this verse from that key word, for new. Those God for new, he predestined. So there are two verbs there, for knowing and predestining, if that is English. Now which one comes before the other? It is for knowledge, see God for knows first and then predestines. Praise the name of the Lord. So this tells us that God's predetermined counsel is based on his foreknowledge. God predestines you to belong to him based on what he already knows concerning you. Praise the name of the Lord. God's foreknowledge is the basis for his predetermined counsel. I'd like us to look at that verse again. Those God for you, he predestines to be conformed to the image of his son, not to the image of your pastor. Not to the image of John, not to the image of anyone else, but to the image of his son. Because he knew that his son was the only one who was able to obey him perfectly. He was the blueprint of perfect surrender and submission to God, and therefore he predestined us to be conformed to his image. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, now, with that kind of knowledge, many of us may have asked ourselves this question at one point in our lives that then because God is all knowing, because God is always present, because He is not bound by time, because He predestines us, all of us, you know, to belong to Him in Christ Jesus and to be conformed to the image of His Son, does that mean then that God predestines some people for heaven? and some people for help. This is a question that used to trouble me a lot when I was a kid. And uh, just searching the scriptures for this topic, I realized why it's very confusing. Because it's confusing even people who have a very strong theological background. And I'd like us to look at this question from a scriptural point of view, and by the help of God, is going to grant us So. Does God predestine some people for heaven and some for hell? In order for us to be able to answer this question, we need to look at three aspects of God. We need to understand the nature of God, we need to understand the sovereignty of God, and we also need to understand the will of God. God has a will, just like you and me. God is sovereign. We look at what the sovereignty of God means. And now, on the nature of God, I'd like us just to understand four elements. We can talk about a lot of things when we are looking at the nature of God, but I'll just like us to look at four things. First, we need to understand that God is holy. And when we say God is holy, it means that God is separated from sin. He has no fellowship with sin. In fact, in the Old Testament, even the high priests, when they were going into the tabernacle to offer sacrifices, if they went there with anything that God considered impure or sinful, they will die on the spot. I believe you know that the high priest will go to the Holy of Holies once a year to offer a sacrifice of atonement for the whole nation. The whole nation of Israel will stand just afar off and watch him as he entered, and they will tie a rope on his foot so that I can hear in case who said that he bent for, I can feel what I'm 
praise the name of the Lord. God is God. He has no fellowship with sin. We need to understand. Control over everything. Nothing touches him by surprise. And that's why when Lucifer rebelled, when Adam and Eve joined him in rebellion, I was to Abu, he is in absolute control. Praise the name of the Lord. God's sovereignty means that he is the supreme ruler. There is no other ruler besides him. God is the supreme ruler. There is no higher authority than God. It also means that God has ultimate power. He can do anything he wills to do. It also means that God is the greatest there is, the greatest there has ever been, and the greatest there will ever be. Praise the name of the Lord. That's the sovereignty of God in a nutshell. Quickly, because of time, I say that for us to answer the question, does God predestine people to heaven and some people to hell, we need to look at the nature of God, the sovereignty of God, and the will of God. Now, what is the will of God concerning the salvation of mankind? It is important for us to understand that God does not want any person to perish. It's very important for us to understand that. God does not want any man to perish. It is not God's desire to see people going to hell. It is not God's desire to see people separated from him because that was the very reason as to why God created us in the first place. The Bible says in the book of First John, know that God is love and love must have an object. And therefore God in his own wisdom, because he is love, he decided to create objects with which he could share his love. And that's why you and me are existing here for that very reason. Now, if God is love and he created us to share love with him, why would God want to see anyone perish? And the Bible makes that very clear. It says that the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. That is the heart of God concerning mankind. He wants everyone to come to him because he created us for himself. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says that in the book of Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7, that he created us for his own glory. God's will, again, is made clear in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 to 4, that this is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. The truth of the matter is that when Adam and Eve sinned, we were separated from God. But God wants us to be drawn back to Him. He wants us to, he wants to restore us back to that original place of communion with Him. That is the will of God concerning the salvation of mankind. So as you hear and understand, I know some of us even ministers in our own churches. It is important that we don't condemn others. You know, sometimes we find ourselves condemning people. We need to understand the will and the heart of God first concerning the people who created. God wants everyone to be saved. However, the Bible is also very clear that not all men will be saved. And I think we can guess that. I don't have that scripture here with me, but I think we can find it in the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 27. I think in that verse, Paul is quoting the prophet Isaiah. And he says that only Lord the remnant will be saved. And the Bible uses that term remnant or the term elect to refer to those people who will be saved from eternal damnation. So, in as much as it is God's desire for all men to be saved, the Bible is also very clear that not all men will be saved. And this is based on God's foreknowledge, not on the fact that He called. The thought that he determines the actions of those who will not be saved. Amen. 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 Are we together? Yes. Okay. So, as we have seen, it is God's desire for all of us to be saved. But man has a responsibility in making God's will become a reality. It doesn't mean that now because God wants us to be saved, we will just be saved. 
We have a responsibility, and the responsibility is we need to respond in faith to Christ Jesus. The Bible says that for my father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. That is John chapter 6, verse 40. So you have a responsibility in making God's will become a reality. And that responsibility is to believe and put your faith in Jesus. So who was the or who to whom was hell created? Why did God even create hell? I'd like us to understand this. That hell was originally designed to be a place of judgment for Lucifer and the angels who rebelled with him. I need us to understand that very well. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 25 verse 41, and these are the words of Jesus, that then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cast into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was originally not created for humanity, it was created for the devil and the angels who prepared with him. Because God created man for fellowship with himself, praise the name of the Lord. However, after sin entered the world, after Adam and Eve rebelled against God, hell became the destination for those who reject the salvation that God offers in Christ Jesus. It is important for us to get a whole perspective of this, that in as much as hell was not designed for man originally, sin entered the world and it made hell to be a destination or the destination for those who reject the salvation that God offers in Christ Jesus. It's very important for us to know that. And the key word here is that those who reject God's offer of salvation, it means that they will fully make a choice not to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. And then that becomes their destination. Praise the name of the Lord. So therefore today, we have looked at what free will is, why God gave us free will. We've gotten a sneak preview of what it means to be predestined and predestination and what God predestines us to. We've looked at what hell is, why hell was created, for who was hell created. And I hope that as we will be finalizing on this topic next Sunday during our Bible class, we are going to get even a more in-depth understanding of salvation. Does it mean then that because we have our free will, it is us who choose God? Or does God choose us because of predestination that the Bible talks about? We are going to understand that and we are going to contrast the teachings of a theologian who lived in the 14th century called John Calvin and another one who lived just after his death called Jacobus Arminius because they present very contrasting worldviews concerning this topic and we are going to look at the Bible and understand what does, does the Bible say concerning free will and predestination, what does the Bible say concerning me, my responsibility in getting saved and the responsibility of God in saving me. Is it something that I partner with God in or is it something that God predetermines and I have no say in it. So until next time, God bless you so much.